Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. I am joined today by Rajini Padmanaban and Nandan Chabra, and they are working with QA Infotech in India. And they're going to present a webinar today on the connect between augmented reality and software testing. And if you want to ask them any questions about any of the content they're going through in the webinar, they've created a discussion over on Test Huddle. I'm just going to share a link with you now in the chat box. You'll see the link there. And what I suggest you do is open this link in a, another tab. And any questions you have along the way, just post them in there. And our presenters then will be able to address them afterwards. OK, well, now I'm going to hand you over to today's presenters. And um, we hope you enjoy the webinar. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to this session co-hosted by QA Infotech and Eurostar on the connect between augmented reality and software testing. So I'm joined here today, as Derek mentioned, with my colleague Nandan Chabra, who's been doing quite a bit of research in this space over the last two, three years in terms of augmented reality, where the market is heading, what kind of applications are being built, and more importantly, what is the connect between augmented reality and software testing? And that's the main flow that we want to present to you all today. And as we start here in terms of agenda, I will start off discussing the, the, the main overview in terms of what is the history of augmented reality. Is this something that is new, that has been uh, upcoming and taking shape in the last decade, or is this something that has run in over the last few years, last few decades? So we'll first talk about the history. We'll then talk about why now, you know, why is all of this coming into mainstream market right now, and why not before? Nandan will then take over to talk about augmented reality's internals, you know, trying to understand what happens at a more system level, what are the benefits AR brings to the table, what really is the role of a tester, more importantly, the dual role that a tester herein occupies, whether it is on first hand testing AR applications, or at a second level, how can testers leverage augmented reality to make themselves more effective and more uh, productive in what we do? Having talked about those, we'll talk about what are the challenges in AR systems, because certainly this is, a, this is a discipline which is continuing to shape. So it's not a magic silver bullet out there. It certainly is riddled with challenges. We'll talk about those challenges and some of the mitigations. And finally, we'll discuss what the takeaways are. So with that, in terms of understanding augmented reality, I want to start off posting this question saying we certainly live in an age of ubiquitous computing. There is computing that's happening all around us, whether it's social computing, mobile, internet of things, a bunch of things that's happening around us. And more importantly now, this new element of augmented reality is also starting to take shape. So the bigger question here is, are we ready for it? So to be able to answer this, are we ready for it, let's first understand augmented reality with a few examples. I will talk about these few examples and give you a very simple layman definition. Nandan will then go over into a formal definition and the internals. So in this example out here, we see this little girl sitting inside her car, looking at the animals out at a far distance in a jungle safari. So she wants to view them up close, and she's able to do this with a quick zoom in on her car's window. This is augmented reality in real-time use. Yet another example, here we have a man with his head-mounted display in his kitchen projecting different displays, customized feeds on different display mediums in his kitchen, be it his wall, be it his refrigerator, be it his cabinets. Here again, this is augmented reality put to real-time use. In the third example here, we have this gentleman who's using his hand as a dial pad to place a call. And he is none other than Pranav Mistri. He heads the research division at Samsung. And if you will, called as one of the pioneers in this space of augmented reality. So these are all some practical examples that we are seeing beginning to take shape. And if we really look at what augmented reality is based on all these examples, it's nothing but a real-time experience which is taken in and augmented or enhanced to give a much better experience and an unrealized potential to the end user. So in very simple terms, that is augmented reality. 
Now let's look at the history of it. You know, this brings us to the next question of whether it has started taking shape only in the last few years or is this the, something that has existed in varied shapes and forms over the last century. So it has had very small, humble, but significant beginnings over the last century. For instance, in 1901, this author, the child fiction author L. Frank Baum, he leveraged electronic displays. And this was one of those very first small baby steps that was taken towards the growth of augmented reality. A half a century later, this person, Morton Helig, he put together a simulator to experience the, um, the, the streets of Brooklyn, bringing that experience together through this device called Sensoroma. So outside of just the audio and visual experience, the user could hear and really even feel the sensory experiences of being on the streets of Brooklyn. About a decade later, Professor Ivan Sutherland, he invented the first head-mounted display, one of those very first inventions, if you will, which down the line led to our Google Glass that we have as of today. This was a very significant um, innovation in the space of augmented reality. Again, a few years later, in 1975, Myron Kruger put something together called a video place, which really allowed users interact through gestures and through actions with visual objects, with virtual objects. So the point that we are driving um, here is that augmented reality has certainly had um, multiple instances where uh, it has come into sort of the industry contact over the last century. Although the main thing now is it is it's only in these last few years that the industry has really started accepting augmented reality and started seeing augmented reality applications. So at this point, I, I let Darig initiate the first poll. And this poll is around the connect between augmented reality and variable computing and whether you all agree with if there is an overlap or not. So we'll give you a few seconds to answer here before we interpret the results. That's up near 80% voted there now, so 84 and 95. I think that's pretty much everyone voted. So if you haven't voted yet, um, please click on the option there. Okay, um, I'm going to close the poll now, and that's 100% vote. I'm just going to close the poll, and we'll go through the results then. Uh, can you see that there, Nandan and Rajini? Not yet, Darug. Okay. If you're able to tell us what the poll results okay. are. Okay. Um, you may not see it yourself, but the way the poll results have gone there is 84% say yes and 16% say no. Perfect. So thank you for this response. The interesting way of looking here is, as you all agree, there is certainly an overlap. And I'll tell you where really the overlap is. The overlap is primarily in the space of wearable devices. So wearable computing certainly uses wearable devices. But augmented reality may also use wearable devices. For instance, we saw the gentleman out there, or at least the, uh, you know, the, the person in the picture out there with his head-mounted display. So in that case, for instance, the AR application is using a wearable device, having an overlap with wearable computing. And it can also basically have results in sync. You know, a result coming out of an augmented reality application could have something in connect with a wearable application. So that's where the overlap is. There is an overlap, but there is a significant amount of difference too. So thank you for those results. With that, we will move on. So we'll talk about why now, why not before, right? So we, we did say there has been a rich history to augmented reality. There's been a lot of advancements or small but simple finds in the last century. 
If so, why is it that the industry is starting to recognize AR applications right now? Why are a lot more AR applications being built right now and not before? I think this really ties back to the evolution of any discipline, any technology for that matter. It's not going to be possible for anything to evolve as a standalone group. There is, a, there is a need for a lot of other aiding or supporting technologies as well to facilitate the growth of a main technology. And that's exactly what's happening with AR. For instance, the growth in the space of processing units, CPUs, GPUs, availability of sensors and devices, cameras, GPSs, accelerometers, the growth in the space of the internet, your 3Gs, 4Gs, uh, 5Gs as well, um, artificial intelligence, a lot has been happening in the space of AI. It's no longer restricted to a subject matter that we just learn in our schools and colleges. A bunch of research labs are uh, going on with significant finds in the space of AI. For instance, Paul Allen has a lab that he specifically set up for artificial intelligence, hiring some very senior minds in the industry to take on research in this particular space. Similarly, Google has partnered with Stanford University for some very advanced image recognition capabilities. So all of these together are the core reasons which are driving the growth of augmented reality right now compared to the past years. <coughs> Excuse me. And in terms of numbers, if we see, the data, the statistics that we see here are certainly mind-boggling. Augmented reality has been growing at the rate of 132% compounded annual uh, growth rate between these years of 2013 and 2018. In terms of revenues, if we see, there are two parts to this. Mobile augmented reality applications, non-mobile augmented reality applications. The non-mobile part is a very small piece. It is anticipated to be about, uh, about $2, billion, uh, $2 billion market. But put together with the mobile augmented reality market, it's a large piece. It's anticipated to be $600 billion in terms of revenues by 2016. And in terms of sheer app downloads, uh, from a very modest 118 million downloads in 2012, it's expected to touch 3.5 billion downloads by 2017. So all of these are continuing to be a reassurance for us that augmented reality is growing very fast. The wave is surging very, very fast. And we as testers certainly need to understand this in greater detail in terms of what AR is, how AR applications are being built, what does it take to testing AR applications, and how can we use AR in software testing. So for all of these, I will pass this over to my colleague Nandan here, who will walk you through in greater detail. Hi. Thank you, Rajni, for this brief overview of AR. Hello, everyone. So I hope everyone is ready to take a dive into the depths of this technology. But first, let us understand what is augmented reality. Now, if you go by the dictionary meaning of the word augment, it means enhancing or increasing one's own properties. Going by this definition, let's get back to what is AR. Now, augmented reality is a direct or live feed of the real world that is augmented by computer-generated input, which enhances the end user's perception of the world by providing additional information that have communication capabilities. Let's understand this definition by using this simple example. So here we have this advertisement of a car that we usually find in our newspapers and magazines. And when we view this advertisement with our naked eyes, it just appears to be a normal static page giving minor information like cars, design, color, model and make. Now, let's say that you want to know more about this car. You will start Googling it out. But I will do the same. I will take out my smart device and will scan, scan this advertisement through this augmented reality application installed in my smart device. So through this application, as we can see in this video, now the same static page has now become a dynamic one. That is, it, can, it is now augmented with additional information. We can see more details about the car by using these arrow buttons, which are right here or watch a video exploring its more features without even typing anything. So now if any one of you is still having some trouble understanding this technology, let's compare it with different environments to get an even better picture of what augmented reality is. So this is the reality virtuality continuum concept first introduced by Paul Milligram. So the first environment we have is real environment. Here we have a plant that depicts a real world object 
which we can touch and feel. And second one we have is virtual environment. Now this virtual environment is an entirely computer generated environment that simulates reality such as your computer games and animated movies. And then we have augmented virtuality. Now in this the real user is immersed inside an artificially created virtual world. For example your flight simulations and 3D movies. And then comes augmented reality. Now in augmented reality the aim is not to immerse the real user inside an artificially created virtual world but to augment objects in the physical world by enhancing them with the wealth of digital information that have communication capabilities. In other words, we can say that a virtual environment replaces reality, whereas augmented reality enhances reality. And now with this, I'm pretty sure that everyone will be interested in knowing that how these two worlds combine. So let's get a brief view on this. What we need is precise models. Now the AR application needs to know the accurate dimension of any 2D, 3D object so that it can augment these virtual objects on your real scene at proper scale. Then we need to com the combination of local and global coordinate systems. Now the AR application needs to map the local coordinates that are centered on your device with the global coordinates of the real scene. Say for example, on hovering your smart device on any object, the AR application will use your smartphone's coordinate information to map the real scene that is in front of the camera. And then we have register 3D objects. Now AR application should register models of 3D objects correctly so that they reference their own counterparts in the scene. Say for example, if we see this image closely, we would want that the 3D model of lizard should be augmented upon the image of lizard and not of any other animal. And then we have tracking objects. Now the AR application needs to track objects in real time with speed and accuracy so that the augmented model stays aligned with the real world when the user interacts with them. So there are roughly two methods by which objects are tracked in AR applications. The first one is by using markerless tracking. Now in this some invisible imaginary tracking points are made by the AR application which are not visible to the naked eyes by using some complex feature extraction algorithms. So the AR application keeps a track of these points to locate and identify objects in space. And then the second one is by using visual markers. As you can see here that AR application keeps a track of these unique markers which are like your barcodes and QR codes and then it augment objects on them. So in the last couple of months I have been working on creating augmented reality experiences and it would be a great pleasure to share that experience with you all. So here's a uh, so looking at its internals, first we need a 3D modeling engine to interact with the objects. So for this task we are using Unity, which is a gaming engine and it's quite friendly to use. And then we need something that would map our models with our image targets. So for that we are using SDK software development kit developed by Qualcomm named Euphoria. So these two combined, in, combined together are enough to create a simple AR experience. And these are the softwares that we are using at our project and there are several others in, our, in the competition which supports building of AR experiences. Now getting back to our Unity interface, here we are seeing a view of Unity and there in between we have a 3D model of our office. And then on the left hand side here, we can see some hierarchical structures of the components that I have used to build this model. And then on integrating Viewphoria SDK in Unity, we were able to map our 3D model with an image of our office. So called, so called here is an image target. So here this is the 3D model we are talking about. And at the back, this image is the image target. And when I hover my AR application in front of my image target, it would augment, uh, augment this 3D model on it and we track this image in real time as a movement device. So here this is my image target on my uh, smartphone screen and this is the 3D model that is rendered in real time on this image. So all this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's look at some more benefits of this technology. Realizing unimagined potential. So we have been seeing some very exciting examples all along like, use, like using your hand as a dial pad or interacting with your car's side window. So these are some unimagined opportunities that this technology is providing us. They are not just concepts anymore, but are now closer to reality with its exponential growth. 
and then we have on-demand information. So this technology combined with artificial intelligence has the capability to provide you on-demand information by just hovering your smart device in front of your subject as opposed to trying to search for information about that subject yourself. And this one is quite interesting, cost effectiveness. As you don't need to purchase any extra gadget to experience this technology, what you have to do is just take out your smartphone out of your pocket and start exploring it out. We can say that this is more of an advantage of this technology than a benefit. And for our testing community, we have short test setup time. Now we can enhance our working capabilities and use augmented reality to actually help us in testing up our test machines. I'll be covering this concept in my subsequent slides. Increased test efficiency. Now as testers, we, can, we would be able to concentrate more on testing tasks and bother less on maintaining, and, uh, maintaining reports and documentations. <clears throat> so till now we have briefly understood what is augmented reality, some of its history, some details about its internals and some of its benefits. Now let's take a step forward with the tester's point of view. Now a tester might interact with the AR, AR systems in two ways. First one being as a tester test these applications and second one being as an end user utilize AR systems for our own benefit. By this I mean how we can use this technology to cut down our manual efforts. So let's take these points one by one. Uh, so let me begin taking an example which I'm sure everyone could relate with. With the advancement in technology, AR can be used to enhance the teaching and learning experience of students. Let's see how. Now we have all learned and studied about working of heart using these kind of, kind of two-dimensional diagrams in our school days, which at first look provides you with some details of facts about the heart, but in itself, this diagram is not so self-explanatory. Now the teacher needs to put in a lot of effort to help make these students understand the working of heart theoretically. And theoretical knowledge is not so well retained by our brain. As our brains are wired in such a way that we tend to retain visual content more efficiently than the textual one. So now let's see that how this augmented reality would enhance the learning experience of students. Now I have used this application named Anatomy 4D for this demo and I will scan that same 2D image of heart with this application and make this heart come alive. Now we can see here that how this 2D diagram and this 3D object are beautifully married together. And then you can also see that I can interact with this model too. Now this gives you a more clearer picture about the working of heart, that is how we can use uh, how the uh, valves are opening and closing, the blood flow and the rhythmic pumping of heart. Now in this way it is very easy for the teachers to pinpoint different parts of the heart to students in a more interactive manner. So this is the power of augmented reality. So the question comes, as a tester, the safeguarders of quality, what is our responsibility in it? How do we test this? How we as testers can help make these applications more sturdy so that the performance of these applications can be optimized and made more robust in the real world environment and hence enhance the overall experience of the end user. So while testing these applications, I came across certain glitches in those applications which I would like to share with you all here. So the application that I am going to use is named Augment, which is available on Google Play Store and Apple Store. And this application gives you the liberty to create your own image targets. And so I use my business card as an image target or so-called as a tracker in this case. And let's see this video for a quick demonstration how to create an image target. So I've clicked on this uh, 3D Jeep, model of Jeep. And this is by image and I'm just going to the create tracker button. I'm going to align this application in front of my business card. And here we can see that this augmented 3D model is rendered on the card. When I rotate this card, this 3D model also rotates along with it with respect to the card's orientation. However, while doing so, I also found one bug in this application which I have documented in this next video. So in this video, you will see that when I rotated this card at a certain lateral direction, the 3D model no longer rotated correspondingly 
and it changed its alignment. Here we have this Jeep in a vertical uh, horizontal position to the car, parallel to the car and it's vertical right now. This is the issue. Now for the second example, if I replace this card which has a rough surface with a reflective surface like a glossy 3CD cover, let's see how this application reacts to this change. Then again, as you can see here that the model is flickering in the sky. Now this example here is more of a challenge of AI systems than a bug. That AI systems have trouble detecting image targets that are under reflective surfaces. So these are the kind of bugs that are there in the upcoming technologies which we as testers need to dig them out. Now, the real world has n dimensions to it. So the combination of software along with the real world environment is a huge testing area. So it is our job to find out that out of these n combinations, what all combinations are more realistic and cover worst case scenarios. So as I've been testing some of these applications, let me just outline the testing scope which help me and might help others as well. First one is tracking objects in real time. Now we need to make sure that the tracking of object, augmented objects is done in real time and also that the objects is rendered properly by the AR application. Performance of application under different inputs. Now we need to verify that how the AR application handles different inputs such as change in angles, orientation and distance between the image target and your smart device application registers 2D and 3D objects correctly and appropriately. We need to verify that image targets are mapped correctly with their corresponding 3D objects, such as the lizard example that we discussed earlier, where the 3D model of lizard was augmented on its own corresponding image. And then hyperlinks and other interactive buttons redirect as expected. Now we need to make sure that all the interactive buttons and hyperlinks are redirecting to the correct destination such as the car example, car advertisement that we saw earlier. And then network related issues, when we need to check how the application would react if the user is connected to a Wi-Fi, 2G, 3G or a 4G network. Now this was all about how we can test augmented reality applications. Now how about if we can make use of AR applications to help us while we are testing other applications. So this brings me to the second part of my presentation that is augmented reality based testing. So while exploring this topic, I identified some areas where augmented reality can be useful in sharing some of the load from the testers. Now I'll be supporting the following concepts with some illustrations that will help you understand and relate to these points in a better way. So first one we have is getting new resources up to speed with minimal involvement of senior resources. Now, as per my experience, whenever there is a new joining in our team, we usually assign a senior resource to mentor him and make him understand the basic flows of the application. And this eats away his precious time. Then a thought came to my mind, that do we requ actually require a senior resource's time for this task? So here comes the role of augmented reality. So let's have a look at this concept illustration. So right now, we are at the login page of my application and I'm going to take out my smart device that, an, that has an augmented reality application installed and scan this login page. Here I'm scanning this login page to this app, my AR application and by just hovering and scanning the login page of application through my smart device, a screenshot walkthrough started and guided me all along the application, minimizing the need of the senior dedicated mentor for this task and hence saving a lot of time. Now this can be very useful in training and knowledge sharing sessions. Now let's look at our next illustration. Preparing and tracking test machines. Remember I talked about short test setup time in our benefits section. So this is what, this is what I was talking about. Now we have all done or will do compatibility testing in our testing career. And we have to jump across multiple systems just to find out what OS and browser version that system is running on and this eats away your precious time. So I made some efforts and found that we can minimize this load by using augmented reality. The same is demonstrated in this following illustration. So here we have, we are on my systems logon screen and I'm going to scan this logon screen with my AR application. Now the AR application 
identifies my machine and provides me some brief details about my system like here I'm running a Windows 7 machine and I've installed these many browsers with their respective plugins versions. Hence this minimizes my efforts of identifying configuration of the system manually. Moving on to the next example, executing test cases on the fly. So there is always, always been situations where we have to perform hundreds of test cases and it becomes a bit cumbersome and eye straining task to execute this count by glancing back and forth at the application and test cases again and again. So wouldn't it be useful if the information is overlaid in a line of vision? So let's look at this illustration. Here I have to perform smoke tests of this application and let's say that I am wearing Google glasses. So this augmented reality application would help me to view all the previously performed test cases, my current test case and all the pending test cases by just using my hand gestures or voice commands. Moreover, by using my hand gestures like this or this, I can pass or fail a test case and after the completion of the test case execution, the test case report would be generated with the help of augmented reality system. So these are some of the implementation areas where augmented reality can be, become our helping hand. And this is all from my side and I will invite Rajni back to discuss about the challenges that one might face while testing this application. Thanks Nandan for all those exciting experiences that you shared yeah. with us. I, I certainly wish the, the heart example was there back in my school days <laughs> to, to have made it uh, much easier and I'm sure uh, most of us listening here would also agree. Um, you know, all of those would have certainly made, uh, whether it's education, whether it's healthcare, basically making things more effective, more productive for both the uh, consumers who are users in providing the services as well as consumers who are intaking the services. <clears throat> as Nandan rightly mentioned, we're really just at the tip of the iceberg. The potential to realize here is really unlimited, is, is a huge landscape. The, the important thing to keep in mind is it's certainly riddled with challenges. What are some of those challenges? Uh, you know, we all understand that as a discipline is shaping up, as any new technology comes in, <clears throat> certainly there are going to be challenges which the industry will work out. You know, that is the way a certain discipline shapes up. But really at this particular point in time, if we see what are some of those challenges, both from building AR applications as well as testing AR applications. Firstly, there's a lot of dependency on external factors, you know, whether it's multiple screens that we work with, multiple camera resolutions that we work with, very high dependencies on devices such as sensors, cameras, accelerometers. So, for instance, if we take a mobile application into consideration uh, and the dependencies that are at play, the dependencies are more at a software level, you know, for instance, what are the other applications it interacts with, are there API calls that are being made, what are the web services, so it's more at that level, but when it comes to augmented reality, uh, sort of is similar to wearable computing as well. A lot of these hardware dependencies also that come into play in addition to the mobile device on which you're actually using it. So again, very high dependency here. Uh, at a more testing level, um, if we see compatibility matrices are already huge. It has already gotten really complex with mobile computing at play. And augmented reality is only going to further worsen things out here. Um, whether we see this as, as a worsening thing or more of an opportunity for testers to work on and optimizing, that's a different question, but certainly a factor that the tester cannot ignore, a huge set of compatibility issues that he needs to take into account. <clears throat> Similarly, other challenges around this is still under research. Uh, there is still a lot of bugs, you know, things are still at a very early stage. For instance, one of the bugs that Nandan just discussed, where the image target is not detected very well when the base surface is reflective in nature. Uh, limited reachability in terms of scope still, where we know that the application potential is huge. Uh, but for instance, even those jungle safari example or the head mounted display for multiple feeds, all of these are still more at a visionary stage or more at a conceptual stage. The question is, have we started realizing all of these in the practical world? Not as yet in full form. So all of these will have to come into the mainstream market, will have to be tested thoroughly, will have to be accepted and used by end users. So at this point in time, the reachability out there in the market is still limited. And the last but more important thing here is, 
when it comes to testing for AR, it's very difficult to simulate and test all of it within a lab, within a closed door environment. A lot of field testing, a lot of interaction with end users, a lot of uh, beta or crowdsource testing, for instance, will become important. So testing will become more of a decentralized approach, <clears throat> excuse me, as opposed to being a centralized approach within a closed lab environment. So these are things that we as testers need to be ready to face. There are other challenges around usability, performance, um, uh, the expense, how expensive is an AR device just in case there is a device associated with it. Only now device costs have really started coming down. So all of these will have to be factored in when we look at the larger scheme of challenges for uh, using AR systems. With that, I'll let Darig open up the second poll here. Jarek, do we have you there opening up the second poll? Yes, the, uh, the poll is launched there now and there's over 60-70% okay. um, have taken part so far. Uh, we're at 84. <clears throat> and if you haven't taken part yet, please do. We'll run the poll for just a little bit longer. Okay, I think that's everyone there now who's going to take part. Um, uh, let me just close the poll here now. And the results are as follows. 13% um, have said yes. And the question we asked was, do you see your organization leveraging AOR over the next five years? 13% uh, have said yes. Uh, then there's 19% have said no. 63% majority there have said maybe, and then 6% have said not sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for those responses. I think I concur largely with that 63% who've said maybe. Honestly, if I was taking this poll, attending this webinar, I think that's what I would have said too, because uh, I think the industry itself is still unsure. The numbers, as we discussed initially, are certainly very promising to see, uh, but in terms of adoption in terms of embracing it, we are still in an unsure space. But if so, uh, if that is where you are, here is a reassurance for you. There are a bunch of players out there already in this space, both startups, small players, as well as some very large players. A lot of partnerships, collaborations, acquisitions are already being triggered. For instance, Apple has invested in Meta.io. It has acquired Meta.io. Google has acquired Magic Leap. Um, Nandan spoke about the Qualcomm's rendering engine uh, for augmented reality. So a bunch of players that are still already out there, so that's more of a reassurance for us. The uh, statistics that we saw are also a reassurance, but I think it is important for the industry to start seeing some very important applications. The next year will certainly be uh, a very important year for the uh, discipline of augmented reality for the industry to start seeing some applications for us to have more confidence in what is shaping up. So with that, we want to wind down this webinar with a few important takeaways, specifically again for us as testers. So certainly here, as we saw, the wave is surging. The numbers are certainly mind-boggling. Um, you know, $600 billion is definitely not a negligible number. It's a huge number that, that is important for us to make note of. The wave is surging, and for us as testers, certainly the dual responsibility of trying to understand what it takes to test AR applications. Uh, because in my personal view, you know, having talked to a lot of uh, industry professionals, practitioners, I think wearable computing and augmented reality today is where exactly mobile computing was, say, about eight, nine years back. Uh, so it is still at that very nascent stage, but when it comes in, the kind of tests that we take on, the kind of interactions that are going to take place between the application and the external devices, accounting for all of those, we have a huge responsibility as testers. Things like, for instance, it cannot be tested in a closed lab environment completely. So factoring all of those, what kind of tests need to be uh, accounted for? Nandan showed you some tests, but again, that's not an exhaustive test. There is so much more that can be really done in this space. So that's number one. 
And also, again, as testers, how do we use augmented reality to make our lives better, to become more efficient and productive? So those of you who are interested, there are a bunch of these small applications that you can go ahead and try. For instance, that's how Nandan really started in our organization. It wasn't really a client requirement or a project where we had to go and work on AR uh, testing. He started it off purely out of his own interest. And the, the organization was also committed to investing in his research, and that's how it took shape in our company. So a bunch of applications, for instance, that Nandan talked about, things like Augment, what was the other application? Anatomy 4D, <laughs> and, and Layer, 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 Layer. there are many available there. A bunch of applications. So those of you who are interested in investing more in this space, just go start off with some small AR application, play around, uh, and see what kind of experiences you can create. Start small, certainly, you know, as I said, the industry itself is shaping, it's not mature, uh, it's not completely stable. Start small, but if you can retain your focus, just in case you want to focus just on the rendering part, just on the display part, or just on the core design part, start off with something small, build together the experiences, and really how Nandan came and impressed the management team here in the company was through all of those, uh, um, uh, the, the building premises that he showed you. And we were actually switching offices from a small office to a building of our own. And the way he came to us was, why don't we use augmented reality to even really go in and define how we should decorate, how the interiors of our office needs to be. So instead of juggling furniture between the you know varied rooms, why don't we use augmented reality to show, oh, this furniture would fit great in this particular space. This particular table or cabinet would work well in this space. That's how he came and showed the management team here that augmented reality can be practically be can practically be used uh, within our immediate uh, you know scope of operations. So the um, applications really are endless. Start small, keep your focus, and that way, when the wave really hits the market, you as a tester, you as an end user will certainly be ready to attack it in full force and have an edge for yourself and your organization. So with that, thank you so much for joining Nandan and me today on this exciting uh, session. We were super excited, as I said, to share these experiences with you all. Hope you all found it exciting too. Um, for, for more information, as Derek mentioned, the resources are available on Test Huddle. We also have our email addresses listed out here, so you're welcome to reach out to us if you want to see any of these demos or experiences in greater detail. And we're happy to answer your questions both here as well as on Test Huddle. Thank you so much with that, and we'll pass the Thank control you. over to Derek for questions that may have come in. Thank you very much to our two presenters today, um, Rajini Padmanavan and Nandan Chabra. It was a, a very interesting discussion and I liked your use of slides and videos. It was excellent. And before we move on to the Q&A session, um, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming Eurostar conference. And this is going to take place in Maastricht on November 2nd to 5th. And our conference chair this year is Ruud Tunison, who's a, a local to the area, um, which is great. He's given us lots of insights on what to expect in Maastricht. And the theme of the conference is walking the testing talk. And if you want to see what sessions we have lined up for you at the conference, just visit the Eurostar website. And one of the sessions that you may be interested in finding out a bit more about is from today's webinar presenter, Rajini. And she will be doing a tutorial on November the 3rd. And the title of this tutorial is Implementing a Crowdsourced Testing Effort. And this year, we are launching a new conference on the Friday of Eurostar. It's going to be a mobile testing conference called Mobile Deep Dive. It's going to feature three keynotes, eight track sessions, and we have a limited offer here of two for one tickets. And that's just while these tickets um, well supplies last, really. So it's first come, first serve, and if you want to avail of this offer, just visit the conference.eurostarsoftwaretesting.com forward slash mobile hyphen testing hyphen conference. And you'll find all the information you need there for availing of this great offer. And coming up in September, we've got a great series of webinars called uh, The Way We Work webinar series from September 15th to 18th. 
And during this series, we aim to explore current and future trends in testing by just highlighting a few popular areas, such as um, Graham and uh, Philip's webinar there, the first one on programming for testers, that's Graham Thomas and Philip Wiles. Then we have a webinar on DevOps from Rob Lambert, followed by another webinar from Adam Knight on big data. And to wrap up the series then, we have Professor Andy Stanford-Clark, who will talk to us about the Internet of Things, which was a hugely popular keynote at the Eurostar 2014 conference in Dublin. And you'll find out all the information about these sessions on testhuddle.com forward slash way we work. So now um, I'm going to share with you a link again for that discussion on Test Huddle, where you will see all the questions there, where you can post questions, I mean, for today's presenters, and just give your feedback on the session. And you'll see there in your chat box, we have the link. And just before we head across, we'll just look at one or two questions to get the ball rolling. And the first question I have for you guys here is, uh, Google has stopped Google Glass Explorer edition. Why might the reason behind this, or what might be the reason behind this? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Uh, first of all, it was one of the very first product that came to the market in the augmented reality wearable domain. And, then, and like any new technology, it had its drawbacks, like security issues, privacy, privacy issues, performance, health related issues. And then Google is known to release its products in beta phase. Whereas if you compare that with Apple, they believe in providing the finished products in market. So this is what happened exactly in the case of Google Glass Explorer program. They received some mixed feedbacks from their users. And then in the month of January 2015, they closed this program with a promise to come back with more efficient version of Glass. And in the last couple of days, we have heard rumors that Google is in fact ready with a new version. Uh, Rajni, would you like to add something on to it? Yeah, I think this is not, uh, see there are a couple of things here. One is, um, we all know Google typically is, is, as Nandan mentioned, very famous for releasing um, applications and software in the beta mode, whereas Apple is known for finishing, uh, releasing sort of 100% finished and ready to consume applications. Um, so one, it, 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 it aligns with how typically Google has operated, and secondly, um, this is certainly a space which is still being researched big time. It is, it is a sort of a paradigm shift in the technology world, if you will. So with that happening, um, not just Google, there is a good chance there could be other players also that could release something out, try the waters a little bit, pull it off, come back with a better version. So I think that is a trend we should expect to see not just from Google, but probably from other players too. The next question I have for you guys is, to what extent do you think augmented reality would be able to penetrate in the testing domain? Hmm. Okay. Um, interesting. Again, um, very difficult to answer this question sort of by sheer numbers, uh, objectively. Uh, I think where I'd want to start off is with the market size itself. It, it continues to amaze me that it's going to very soon be a $600 billion market overall for augmented reality applications. So if that is the case, then quality is a very huge piece of that $600 billion AR application market. Uh, so I think that's a very important number for us to keep in mind. Um, secondly, the thing here is um, typically any computing that is evolving we as testers, I think, are still continuing to think how do, we, how do we go about testing for those applications. We are still limiting ourselves with a horseshoe view of only looking at that. Whereas Nandan herein brings in a different and interesting perspective of how do we also use that technology to make ourselves more productive. The examples that he gave you all in terms of you know thumbs, down, thumbs up for a test pass, thumbs down for a test fail, all of those are, I think, very important ways in which we can actually leverage it for testing. And when we do that, uh, the penetration is certainly going to be huge. But outside of even that, quality is going to be a huge component in taking these AR applications successfully to the marketplace. Um, again, difficult for me to quantify in terms of numbers, but I think the penetration is going to be huge. Oh, 
Sorry, my microphone was switched off there for a second. I apologize. Um, I'll take one last question here, and then we must head across to Test Huddle. And um, the question I have here is, as you said, testing of these AOR applications cannot be done in a closed lab environment alone. How will we know when to stop testing? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I'm sure I had the full answer to this, and I'm sure most test managers will uh, you know, soon uh, want to have an answer to this as well. Um, you know, as more of these uh, sort of intriguing computing options come into play, it's going to be very difficult for us to objectively answer, um, are we ready for that market release? Are we ready, you know, as test managers, test directors, testers, we've had this question even in the past. Um, and I think the, the baton that has helped us in the past is what is going to help us right now as well. We need to increasingly depend on the right metrics that we need to use to make that call saying whether the application is ready for uh, end user consumption. And certainly these metrics cannot be your age old redundant metrics, you know, things like how many tests were executed, how many defects were found. Those are certainly not going to be uh, helpful. I think more of the end user facing metrics, what kind of requirements do they ask for? What kind of scenarios would they actually use the application for? Traceability metrics, requirements coverage metrics. I think those are going to be very, very important. Again, as you said in the question, more importantly because um, a lot of the testing is going to happen in a decentralized manner. Um, so I think these new innovations, these new technologies that evolve continue to remind us that testing is certainly not a pure science. There is a lot of art to it as well. Uh, we need to make that call in terms of how much of quality have I really covered and accounted for? Um, how does that weigh with my other constraints of time, cost, resources at play? to make that call saying, let me go ahead and release this product uh, out in the market. And as we said, like in case of Google, we will, at least in these initial days, see a few products coming in. Um, you know, it is quite likely we will see a few recalls or takebacks as well. Uh, but as folks in the test management team, it is important for us to define the right set of metrics in line with the application we are building. Uh, to help make that call saying the application is ready for end user consumption. Hopefully that answers the question. That's all we have time for today. And I just want to thank our presenters again. And um, our presenters there, Rajini Padmanaban and Nanda Chiabra. It was a very interesting session. And thank you to all of our attendees for coming along today. If you want to see what other webinars we have coming up, including our our Way We Work series, just visit Test Huddle and you will see a list of our upcoming webinars there in the webinar schedule slider. Uh, thank you all again and we'll see you on Test Huddle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.